All right, let's get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Jane Gubb. I am the team librarian at Pas Pasadena Public Library. And thanks for tuning in to the Out of the Pantry lesson today. We will be making a um, wild rice and squash soup with some cornbread. This pot of soup can serve approximately six to eight people, but maybe more depending on how much people eat. So you might have some leftover tonight and I'll, I'll we'll, um, go through with you how to store it and how to reheat it as well at the end of the lesson. So please gather all of your ingredients. Um, hopefully most of you are able to pick up a kit and or if not, you're able to go to the market and pick up a few things as well. Um, I will be kind of listing everything out. So this is everything that you need. You'll, you will need an acorn squash. You can also substitute a potato if you prefer. Uh, a large potato, we will be using a russet potato in this lesson, um, but any will work. You'll need about two to three garlic cloves, a box of rice roni, wild rice, plus the seasoning pack it comes with. And if you don't have any of that, um, if you, um, have just some wild rice and um, some seasonings around the house, like some garlic powder and dried parsley, you can use that too. You will need uh, four cups of chicken or veggie broth, um, some bouillon cubes. Um, in your kit, you received uh, like two large ones. Um, and, or if you are a vegetarian, you can substitute that with four cups of veggie stock as well. You'll need a can of corn, a box of cornbread mix. Um, in this lesson, we'll use the Jiffy corn muffin mix, um, but any will work. You'll just follow the directions on there. And along with that cornbread mix, you'll need one egg and the third cup of milk. Now, if you don't have those ingredients at home, that's okay. You can just skip the cornbread part. Um, but if you have those, it, it'll, it will go along with the cornbread. You'll need salt, pepper, and oil and about two to eight tablespoons of cornstarch. So if you picked up an ingredients kit from the library, the unlabeled uh, container, little plastic container is cornstarch. Next, you'll need your equipment. And of course, you'll also need a stove, a cutting board, your pot and an oven. All right, so, okay. So first we're gonna, um, cut the ingredients. So this part is going to take a while. I'm going to share my phone. Okay. So I think you can see that. So we are going to cut and peel the, the acorn squash. The easiest way to do this is because um, we're going to use the whole thing. So you have to peel them. And in these little ridges, it's easiest to um, cut across the ridges. And then we're gonna peel each section because that's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you have a different way of you prefer to do it, that's fine. But it's hard to get the peeler inside the ridges um, if you don't cut them open. So go ahead and start on that. This will take a while. And just let me know if you have any questions. Actually, I'm gonna cut off the end first here. So it's flat. Um, we're gonna cut in half. Need a sharp knife for this one. Okay. And you'll need a spoon. Just be very careful. That's what the inside looks like. So we're gonna get a spoon and we're gonna scoop out the insides. So, you know, you can just throw that in the trash or if you compost things, you can put it in your compost. So go ahead and do that. Actually, I'm gonna do it in front of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just using a bowl as a trash bin.
Okay. I'm actually just gonna pause here for a moment because I forgot to tell you <laughs> to turn on the oven. So go ahead and preheat your oven so that can get started. Preheat it to 400. I'm actually gonna do a uh, 410 on mine because my, I have a, a thermometer inside my oven that shows that it has been consistently 10 degrees lower. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 400. Then you can get back to scooping this. Next, I am going to cut the, uh, the roots or the tip of it. So, you know, we're not going to eat that side of it. So we're just gonna shave that off just a little. And do that to both sides. Okay. Once you get to this part, go ahead and start cutting the little sections. Just cut across the ridges. And be very careful. My counter is a little high for me, so putting um, my putting some force behind a knife is a little difficult. But I try to be careful doing this. Once you have all your pieces cut, you can go ahead and start peeling the skin off. So I'm gonna move, I have a large cutting board, so I'm gonna move everything off to the side. If your cutting board is small, please um, use like a tray or a bowl to hold your pieces so your cutting board doesn't get too messy, but I'm gonna go ahead and start peeling them. Done with that is I'm gonna peel my potato and then we're gonna throw out all of the um, peelings. Once you're done, clean up your station. All right, next we're gonna cut the squash and potatoes. So I am going to just cube the potatoes. Now I'm gonna cut it directly in the middle because the last time I did this recipe, my potato went bad. So I, I cut it directly in the middle just to check. So this is fine. But if your potato somehow, you know, became rotten inside, you can just cut around those pieces and, um, 
use the good parts of the potato. The same thing is true is this is if it starts sprouting, you could just cut off the sprouts. So I'm gonna going to cube them about that size. And slice and then put it aside. I'm just putting it aside on the tray. Okay, the next part after you do that is you're gonna take your squash and we are just gonna slice across it. And we're going to slice approximately about the same size I sliced the potatoes, but I'm not going to cube and I'm just gonna slice it across like that. So do that with all of your squash. I'm gonna put them all on my tray. These will be going into the soup at the same time, so it's okay if you mix it up. Next, we are going to roughly chop the garlic. Now, to do that, you're just gonna break the garlic across. All of you got we should have gotten a full head of garlic. We're only gonna use a few of the cloves. The cloves are about that size. You can use two to three. If they're really small, use more. It's okay, it's, um, it'll be fine if you use a little bit more, even a little bit less. Let me see, there you go. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use four because the ones I have are pretty small. So I'm gonna use my larger one, knife and push all the stuff aside. To peel the garlic, I am putting it on the board and just using the flat end of my knife with the tip or the blade facing the other way and just pushing down on my knife directly onto the garlic. So this makes it easier so that you can peel it. Some of you may have a different method of doing that and that's okay. So whichever works for you. If your garlic is um, has like a little green sprout in the middle, mine doesn't, but if it does, you can just pull that out and use the rest of the garlic. Now, if you have a garlic press, you can use it. Um, I actually have a garlic twister. Um, I'm not going to use it in this lesson, but that's what it looks like and it's totally okay if you wanna use it. So something like this, I just put the garlic and I twist it and it roughly chops it for me, which I really, really like. But I will show you how to roughly chop it with a knife. So you're just going to chop it across, gather all your garlic cloves together and just chop it cross it. I'm gonna do this about two to three times until they are mostly all chopped. And again, it's, it's okay if they're a little bit different sizes. We just want them small enough so that they will influ infuse flavor into the soup. All right. That's it. All right. Next, I believe we are going to start cooking. So the next step is to open everything you have. I always emphasize that before you turn on the fire, <laughs> Make sure that everything is open so you're not struggling with anything in the middle of, you know, um, putting together your recipe on the stove. 
So go ahead and open everything you have. Um, open your can. Open the box. For the corn, I'm going to go ahead and use that small strainer I have and just strain this into, um, we don't, we're not going to use the juice from it. So I'm going to strain it into the sink and just reserve the corn. If you don't have a strainer, that's fine. Just use a spoon and um, hold back the corn and you can get it back. It's okay if some of the juice remains because it's just going to go in the soup. So I have the corn here and I'll set that aside. Okay, we're going to start cooking. So um, I'm just going to put my camera down to my stove. You won't really be able to see what I'm doing in the pan, but I'll try to hold my, uh, my phone above it. So for this part of it, you will need your oil, your salt and pepper. So just put that next to it. You're gonna need your garlic. You actually, we're gonna put everything in there. So, um, but I'm moving closer to the stove. I'm going to keep the rice next to it because this is part of the first part. And we are going to use the seasoning pack, so I'm just going to set it aside. Can I think what else do we need nearby? What you'll need is four cups of water. I have a big measuring cup, so just use regular water. That's fine, but I'm going to go ahead and get four cups. So if your area has poor water quality, you might want to use filtered water. But regular tap water is fine if you um, if that's all you have available. Um, we will be boiling it, so it will be fine. If you don't have a large measuring cup, you can just do it in the middle of um, cooking. Then I also need my cooking spoon. Okay. So I'm going to remove the lid. We don't need that yet. Oops. I'm going to turn on the heat. I'm going to turn it to medium. And I'm going to add about, let me see. Maybe about a half tablespoon of oil. You just need enough to coat the bottom. OK, a half tablespoon wasn't enough. So maybe one tablespoon of oil. But again, you don't need to measure it, just have enough to coat the bottom of your pan. Let me see if I could just show you what that looks like. So I don't know if you can really see that, but yeah, you don't need that much, just enough to coat. Next, I'm going to put in the garlic. So there it is. It only needs about um, a minute, half a minute to a minute. Once there is a little bit of browning on, you know, a little bit of the garlic, you can see, I don't know if you can see that closely, but there's maybe about 10 pieces in here that are a little bit brown. That's fine. Just um, try not to burn it. So the next thing you're gonna do is pour in the rice. And then I am going to coat it with the oil and the garlic. This is a method that, um, that is called purling. 
So what this does is it helps um, keep the shape of the rice a little bit more when it's fully cooked in the soup. At least, at least I think it does. So, all right, once you are done with that, we are going to go ahead and pour in the water. Then you are going to pour in your broth. Oops, watching. After you do that, you can add the seasoning pack. And if you don't have, I mean, if you didn't get rice around and you got, you know, just wet rice, that's fine. Um, the seasonings that's part of this, I believe it's, it looks like it's garlic powder, um, some dried parsley. I think there was sesame in it too. So you can probably add um, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of each if you have, you know, spices sitting around. If you don't, it's, it's not, a, not necessary to add everything in. Your soup may just taste just a little different, that's all. Next, we're just gonna add a, a little bit of pepper. If you don't have a pepper grinder, um, you could just add a pinch. Same thing with the salt. Pinch is fine. And then we're gonna add the two cubes of chicken bouillon. So I have this brand that we got and two, sorry, each cube, and you can read the back of the box, each cube is supposed to go in with two cups of water. So there are different brands of chicken bouillon cubes. I have another one over here. This one's a little bit different. I think it's one cube per one cup of water. So just make sure you're using the right ratio. So the ones that you got in your kit though, they are larger like this. So um, it is two cups of water per cube. So that's why we added four cups of water into your soup. Go ahead and put that in. Again, if you are a vegetarian and you don't wanna use chicken bouillon, you can just substitute that part of it for another four cups of um, vegetable broth. Once you throw that in, we are going to add the corn. corn. And then you are going to carefully put in your squash because it will probably splash back. There's one that went underneath there, it's okay. Add in your potatoes as well. So once you have everything in, just give it a quick stir. And then you're going to turn up your heat. I have baby proofed my stove, so that's what, why these covers are here. But I'm gonna turn it up until um, it's on high. Um, my stove back here is not a super high burner, so, but if you have a really high burner, um, make sure that the flames don't come up on the side of your, um, on the side of your pot, because that's really dangerous. Just turn it up as far as it will go, um, but keep the flames underneath your pot, not on the side. And that's really it for the soup. Um, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be watching the liquid until it um, boils. Um, we don't want it boiling too long. So right when it boils, we're gonna turn down the flame until it's medium or low, basically until it stops boiling and it goes back to simmering, which is just when the bubbles are simmering just a little bit, like bubbling just a little bit. And then after that, we're gonna cover it. So mine's not there yet. So it will take, you know, I don't remember how long it takes, maybe about 10 minutes, um, but, you don't need to time it. You just need to kind of keep an eye out for it. So I'll show you when we get to that step. Okay, so while we wait for the soup to boil, we are going to start the cornbread. So get out all of those ingredients. So 
our mix calls for the mix, a third cup of milk, and an egg. And then we are going to mix that together and just pour it in the tray. It's super simple. So first I am going to put the egg in, just crack it into the bowl. And a third cup of milk, and pour that in. And then I'm just going to mix that, whisk that all together. If you don't have a whisk, just use a fork to break apart the egg. Next, you're just going to take the mix and pour it all together and mix it all together. Pour the whole thing in. I like to use a spatula for this part um, because the, the mixture starts to get in between the whisk. Um, you can use either, it's fine. I don't think it ruins it for anything. And I'm going to use a spatula. Check in on my soup to make sure that it's not quite boiling yet. Okay, so everything is mixed in. Having lumps is okay. You just wanna make sure that it's mostly mixed in, it's fine. Next, we're gonna take your pan and what you're gonna do is grease your pan. I just use oil with a paper towel. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in there. And if you, if you have pan spray, you can just hold it over the sink and just spray it, that's fine. I'm just gonna use the oil. You can use butter too and grease. I'm greasing the bottom and a little bit of the sides because it will climb up on the side. That's it. And then pour in your mix. Now, and just spread it evenly across. Um, if you have an offset spatula, looks like this. It's just a spatula that has a little bent to it. Um, you can, it's easy to use that and spread it across. Otherwise, just use your regular spatula and spread it across too, that's fine. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. We just want it to cook as evenly as possible, but it, the whole thing will cook regardless. It's pretty thin. All right, so have that done. We are just gonna pop this in the oven Again, at 400 degrees. Just gonna slide it right in, right in the middle. And we're gonna time that for 15 minutes. I am going to use my Fitbit to time it. If you have a regular timer, that's fine. Okay. 
So at this point, we're actually just waiting for everything to cook. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen again. Well, actually, let me show you what my soup looks like so far. Probably looks something like that. This is on super high right now. And it looks like it's getting there. It's about to simmer. So again, once it starts to boil, we're gonna turn down the, um, the temperature to between low to medium. And we're going to put a lid on that. So right now, that's what it looks like. So while you wait for your soup to boil, I would recommend taking this time to just clean up your station. So it does look like my soup is boiling now. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna turn it down to medium. And then a little further down until it stops bubbling. Right about there. Mine is between low and medium, so you can do that until it's about simmering. Put a lid on that. And I know we didn't time this, but it actually, um, cooks approximately about the same about the same time as it takes for the cornbread to finish. So my timer has um, seven minutes left of that. And the soup is in there for a, about 25 minutes. And we are going to test whether or not the um, squash is cooked. It's, that's really all you're waiting for. And the last step is um, to thicken the soup. And that's what the cornstarch is for. So I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so the timer on the cornbread is has set. So I am going to take this out of the oven. And that's your cornbread. Now I know this is done because it's super thin and it's you know slightly toasty on the top. But if you're unsure, there's also a crack in it, um, which also tells me that it's done. If you're unsure, you can <clears throat> always get a toothpick or a skewer and just pierce it in the middle, because you guys have probably seen this on television. And if it comes out clean, it's done. So that's a way to tell. So I'm gonna set that aside. Next, we're gonna check on our soup. I'll take the lid off. Can I get a fork? So this is how we're going to test if the potatoes and the squash is done. Going to just lift up a little bit and if it pierces through really easily, we know it's done and it does. So yeah. So if you pierce right through it and it breaks in half, um, it is done. I can't hold my camera above it, but hopefully you guys can tell. So yeah, it pierces really, really easily and it just breaks right apart. So the last step to this is to thicken the soup. Now this is just a, um, um, whether or not you like thick soup, if you are going to be serving this immediately and you like thick soup, you may want to thicken it all the way. Um, this is enough for like eight people though. So um, I only have two people in my family that are going to eat this. So I'm probably not going to thicken all the way. Um, I'm just going to half thicken it, I suppose. Um, or you, if you just like loose soup, you can just eat it this way. So we are going to use the cornstarch method. Um, there are several different ways to thicken the soup. You can take out your, um, your squash and your potato and kind of mash it up and then put it back into the soup. Um, the other way you could do it is if you're not gonna eat this right now, you can store it away. And what will happen is that the squash and the potato will start breaking down and it'll thicken the soup naturally. Um, I am going to thicken it with cornstarch because just to show you how that's done, this is a, a quick way of doing it. Then to get my camera again and, and show you how that's done. So 
I have my, I just have a bowl here. I have a couple of measuring things. I have a quarter cup measuring cup and then a tablespoon and then the cornstarch. So the ratio for thickener is one tablespoon to one tablespoon. So it's one tablespoon of water, it's one tablespoon of cornstarch. I am going to use four tablespoons of each. So, a, and you know, if you're familiar with measurements uh, for the um, cups, a quarter cup is four tablespoons. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use four, a quarter cup, and then a quarter cup of this as well, cornstarch. So I'm going to get a quarter cup in there. into my bowl. Oops. I washed my cup earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure out um, a quarter cup of water. Then get a spoon. I'm making a little hole in the middle not whole, but like a little tunnel. And pour the water in the middle. And then just mix it together. You'll get a, sort of a really loose paste. It's gonna feel really thick at the bottom. So I'll just mix it all in. If you're unsure how much you want to thicken your soup, you can always just do it one tablespoon at a time. That's fine. I think for this amount of soup, um, eight tablespoons and a whole cup of water is okay um, if you were going to eat it right away. I, I am going to show you later on what the soup looks like once you've like left it in the fridge for a while um, because it does get really thick. And um, I did a batch maybe a week or two ago, and that one... Um, I think I put in eight tablespoons of cornstarch and eight, eight uh, well, um, one cup of water. So it was pretty thick. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this into my soup. Okay, once you're done with that, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pour it very slowly into your soup. Now, when I mentioned earlier um, about cornstarch jellies, you don't want the cornstarch jelly in your soup because if you pour it too fast and you don't mix it in, it's going to kind of cook it as like a little block. So you, then you get little jellies in your soup. It's not the end of the world if that happens. You'll just notice it when you're eating your soup. So what I'm gonna do is pour in just a tad, stir it in. Pour in a little bit more, stir that. And you're just gonna keep doing that until you're out of your cornstarch. You'll start to notice that your soup is starting to thicken. I don't know if any of you have noticed it yet, but it is starting to get thick. And again, if you want it thicker, you can always add more like another another um, four tablespoons of cornstarch with a half cup of water. But I think I like this consistency because I know I'm gonna have a lot of soup left over and it's gonna get thick over time. And that's it. That is pretty much your soup. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in a bowl. All right, so there's only two people in my family that's going to eat the soup, so I'm gonna have a lot left over. So um, my, um, my toddler's not gonna eat it probably. Um, just to show you what it looks like when you um, store it. So when you eat, so when you store it overnight, it's pretty gelatinous. Whoops, some water, some evaporation came up. Um, so if you want to freeze it, 
what you'll do is cool the soup down completely. You can cool it in the fridge lid off if you want, or just cool it on your countertop for an hour or so. Then um, cover it up or put it in a, a container with the lid with you know a cover, and then just cool it down until it looks a bit like you know like this. Then you're going to put um, a piece of plastic wrap on it, and then you could put it in the freezer. You could store that you know up to six months if you want to do it that way. Now. If you Now, if you want to reheat this, what you're going to do is take it out of here into your pot and then you're just going to add a little bit of water and just sort of mix it together until you get the consistency that you want. And that's okay to do too. So I wanted to explain that because there is, this is a lot of soup. So just wanted you to know how to do that. And that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining in on the lesson and for cooking along with me. You can find the full recipe and other recipes on our teens blog at pasadena-library.net slash teens. Bye for now.